The following program is underwritten by... It's important to handle any pet behavioral issues with love and care rather than pain and punishment. That's why Dr. Roger Mugford from the Company of Animals created the Pet Corrector, which allows you to safely change unwanted behaviors in your dog, like barking with a simple... Order yours today at www.companyofanimals.us. Celebrating the connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White and groomer Joey Villani. And here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. And welcome to my right, Dr. Debbie, to my left, Joey Villani, straight and center in a little cubicle, Lori Brooks. And uh, answering the phone calls right now, Miss Judy Francis, toll free at one eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. I see all the lines are lit up there, so we're gonna we're gonna head to those phones in just a couple of seconds here, right? Right, we have to. We got to get to those calls. You should train Ladybug to uh, yeah. help you or assist I you know. with that. Seems like she just sits here and lays there <laughs> during the show and really doesn't. Well, at least she's here. Okay. Uh, Lori Brooks, who works so very hard there in the newsroom, what do you have on today's show? Well, you know what cognition is, right? Sure. It's... Kind of like your perception. Of yeah. Thing. So nowadays, scientists are working on dog nition. Dog nition? Mm-hmm. Is that like how uh-huh. smart dogs are? Well, kind of had their attempts at problem solving and stuff. We'll give you the latest information behind it. I know. Wait, what was that? Dog what? Dog nition. Dog nition. Yes. Yeah. That's how you start your dog is with your dog yes, nition. Exactly. It's how they give you the key for it. <laughs> See, it sounds to me like dog nation. <laughs> what about you, Joey? What are you working on for today's show? Accessories. Some really, really cool Ooh. accessories that I've seen recently at a show that oh, that's a lot more than leashes and collars. So, oh. you know, hang around so you can hear what's new and exciting to put on your dog. And then when you say accessories, you Reed. like fingernail polish type of stuff? That's, have to yeah, um, that, 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 that's, that's definitely one of them. Let, I'll definitely say that. That's definitely one of them. Can I just say that's way over the edge right now? No, I do no, not no, no, dress no. up my dog. We love it. Do you want to know something? You're going to go over the cliff when you hear what I have to say. <laughs> okay. Well, that's on the way right here on Animal Radio. Uh, Judy just handed this story to me from, um, actually, I don't know what newspaper because... It's the Tribune. It is the Tribune. Okay. Here it's in a, San Luis Obispo, California. They have uh, trained an otter to use an inhaler. You know those asthma inhalers? That uh, Aww, yeah, I got baby. one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. very that's, good. That's my inhaler right there. Every time my my lungs get tight, I have to right there, and I feel a whole lot better. Is that how you your, use yours, Joey? You know, you. That's exactly how. There you go. They have actually trained an otter to use one of these. She was having trouble breathing, and especially after the smoke from the wildfires in the Seattle area. This happened at the uh, Seattle Aquarium. Uh, they diagnosed the otter with asthma, wow. and uh, the trainer uses food to teach the one-year-old to push her nose on the inhaler to take a deep breath. How cool is that? And the medication is the exact same that us humans use. So That's amazing. That is wow. A, that is amazing. It, we you ready? know, it's weird. People don't realize that that, that pets um, um get asthma. Yeah. yeah. Dogs yeah. get it, too. Our yeah. cat has asthma. Yeah, our cat does. Well, I'm surprised that both of you guys are on inhalers and in animal-related industries. Yeah. Well, you know what? I just do it for the fun of it. <laughs> well, you want to know something? Mine mine actually is um, pet-related. It's from my bird. I never had asthma before. You are allergic. And um, I, had, I had my bird for about, I'm going to say, about seven years. And all of a sudden, I came down with it. And the doctor, when he found out that I had an umbrella cockatoo, which... Um, it comes from their skin because they 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 have their state they have a powder a powdery skin that actually protects their feathers, and he goes, "You're gonna have to get rid of the bird." Well, the bird's still here, and I'm on medication, so uh. there you go. I know here here try some, <laughs> pretty good, huh? I'm just saying, don't knock it until you try it. There, <laughs> getting a little uh, head rush. Yeah, I like it over there, Hal. <laughs> Too much oxygen. <laughs> Jason Feldman will be on the show today. He's a Chicago realtor, and he's going to tell you how to sell your house if you have cats or dogs or animals of any sort, because it may not be easy to sell that puppy once your animals have been living in it for 10, 15 years. I know uh, this particular place where we live, they'll actually have to demolish. Hell, it's not that bad. Really? Yes. Oh, they'll have to demolish. No, they sure won't. They replace the carpet. That's it. Oh, I'm pretty sure the wood and the concrete and everything below is even the... She doesn't listen to this radio show. Are you kidding me? I hope not. Anyway, Jason Feldman will tell us how we can uh, clean up the house to make it look presentable and sellable. And maybe he'll give us some tips on finding a place, too, because that's his business. He's made a pet-friendly real estate business. He's found his niche. He certainly has. Miss Lori Brooks, have we gone to you yet? Have we? Have we? Seen? Yes, we did. <laughs> like we need to go to the phones. Okay. We're going to the phones. 
Let's go to Steve. Hey, Steve, how are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, my uh, little one just had uh, about with, I guess, what they call colitis or whatever, you know, the little uh, blood in the stool mucus and all that. And, yeah. uh, of course, it's uh, frightening. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. It's worse, so, worse so... for me than it is for him, you know. They gave him the, uh, I guess, the what the classic medication is, the uh, meta, what do they call that, meta something? Metronidazole. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you got uh, so it. After after that's over, you know the and everything is uh, firmed up now, and everything that comes in is uh, is going out. What what what? Some a couple of people have said I should give him a probiotic or something to reestablish what that may have have uh, killed. In other words, that's an antibiotic, correct? Metronidazole is, in fact, an antibiotic, yes. So um, so you're, is this his only bout of uh, diarrhea and suspected colitis, or has he had uh, other bouts? He has it? It, he's had it maybe three times before. He's a little West Highland boy, uh, okay. se- seven years old, and uh, it seems to be after he licks uh, grass, you know, uh, uh, where somebody has been or, or something like that, uh, I think that's just my observation of when, you know, how he, what might be upsetting the tummy, you know. Okay. Well, colitis can be triggered by a lot of different things, and it isn't typically just something as simple as licking grass. A lot of times there's um, inflammatory problems that we can have. Dogs can have inflammatory bowel disease. Sometimes they can have parasites like whipworms. There's a whole category of stress-related colitis that we can get, sometimes um, with uh, psychological or physical stress. And there's even fiber-responsive colitis. So there's a lot of different things that can cause this. Um, so I guess my first thing is, if this is the only bout he's ever had, you know, I don't necessarily think you need to go on a long-term probiotic. For some pets that are really struggling with a bout of digestive upset, whether it's colitis or generalized vomiting, diarrhea, if it's deemed appropriate by the veterinarian, a lot of times we will use probiotics. And the idea is that we want to help to restore those good beneficial bacteria because there's always this like little battle that goes on in an animal's gut. (laughs) And there's good bacteria and then there's bad bacteria. And if there's plenty of good bacteria, they're kind of taking up the seats in the theater, then those bad bacteria, the idea is they don't have as much opportunity to get established. So we're trying to create that crowded theater environment in your dog's gut. So a probiotic can help by doing that. Um, So in many cases for pets that are on antibiotics for a lot of various reasons, not just diarrhea, um, we will use probiotics just to help to try to keep that good balance of bacteria in the gut. Um, So that's often used during and after a course of an antibiotic. Um, so perhaps if this is, like you said, more than the first episode your doggy has had, then a good probiotic, um, would be in line. And I think everyone always asks me, I knew you were going to say that because everybody does. And my, my best recommendation is to go with a veterinary uh, produced probiotic. A lot of uh, research still needs to be done into what is the best probiotic. And there is not a standard agreement in veterinary medicine. Um, there's a lot of different um, cultures. You may find some that have lactobacillus, uh, bifidobacterium, enterococcus are all real common ones in different veterinary produced um, probiotics. But efficacy and stability is really a thing. So that's where I, I don't often recommend just going to buy a cheapo one that you'll find on the shelf because um, probiotics have to survive the gut. They have to survive a lot of acid environment in the stomach, get past the bile in the small intestine. And um, old probiotics or those that aren't uh, properly either refrigerated or freeze-dried, they're just not going to have viable live culture in there. And that is really important. So um, there's various different ones. Um, would be at the top of the list then. The it depends. There are some human ones that are refrigerated. Um, in the veterinary world, um, I have two different products on my shelves that I use. Um, I take it back three. Um, but the two main dog cat ones that I use are the Purina um, Fortiflora, which is a freeze dried uh, like little packet. Um, and the other is uh, IM's uh, Pro Store, which is a little chew tab. Um, and in my hands, I find those two are great for dogs and cats. Um, there are some other ones that we we'll use for some of the different exotics as well. As a um, former but, medical student, and, and I dropped out after uh, two years of biology, but, you know, 
the rule is first do no harm. And I think, especially with with him, a lot of things that I would do with, with a person or, or to the, the, the two-legged uh, members of the family, you know, I, I experiment with them, but for some reason we're so cautious with that little boy. <laughs> yeah. And just don't want to. First thing is to do no harm, and I think that's what holds us back on a lot of these uh, natural therapies and, and a, even with medications and vaccines. We're so worried about something adverse happening because they seem so sensitive to, to almost everything, you know. Well, and I think it is. There's a lot of people will take Plus, better care them. of their pets and they, they put more thought into their, their pet's care than sometimes to their own. It's like, ah, I got a headache. No big deal. Well, absolutely. Got a cut, absolutely. scratch. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. There's no doubt about that. And, you know, the interesting thing is that everyone always thinks that probiotics are just for digestive problems. But the truth is, and, and we're finding it has a lot of applications in other areas of the body because 70% of your immune system is actually located in your digestive tract or a dog or cat's digestive tract. So that's where a lot of the battle goes on. So probiotics have um, anti-inflammatory um, properties. They enhance the immune function in the body as well as, um, you know, having that gut battle with those bad bacteria. So there is definitely a lot of indication for it. There's life and death in the, in the colon. <laughs> so, yeah, in that time period. And, uh, Between bacteria, uh, you bet. It's absolutely true. Thank you very much. We love the show. Uh, my wife and I live in, listen to it all the time. We just try to. We don't. We don't have a radio in the house, so we're always wanting to be in the car longer so we can listen to your show. Oh, that is <laughs> awesome to hear. Well, thank you so much for your call today, Steve. Well, you should know this portion of Animal Radio is brought to you by Neutralife Ultra Joint and Liver Support. If your pet has difficulty walking or running, listen up. Try Ultra Joint and Liver Support from Neutral Life Pet with Sammy. Yes, Sammy, that ever important ingredient. Buy one box and get one free by using the code Animal Radio. Call one eight four four Pet Sammy. That's one eight four four Pet S A M E. Or visit neutrallifepet.com. dot com. One eight six six four zero five eight four zero five to reach out to the Dream Team. That could be Doctor Debbie or Dog Father Joey Volani. Hi, Lynn. How are you doing? Lynn? Fine. Yes. Where are you calling from? Um, Florida, Mariana, Florida. Mariana, Florida. Which side of Florida is that on? Yeah, the Panhandle. The Panhandle. I like your accent there. <laughs> and your little laugh too. I like your southern laugh there too. I'm sorry, you probably called to talk to the doc, didn't you? Yeah. Well, I have a question for her. She's right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, I have a five-month-old, or yeah, four and a half, five-month-old Shih Tzu. And he likes to eat his poo. He yeah, is lovely. Not not funny. <laughs> and then you have. And is that? Left. Oh yeah. And is that the only thing that he's kind of eaten abnormally? Yes. Um, I have purchased some pills that they told me to get for him. Someone okay. told me to get these. I think it's called Deter or something like that. <laughs> it doesn't work. And somebody else yeah. told me about Adolf. Me tenderizer, but I don't want to give him that because it's full of sodium. Yeah, and he's probably tender enough, right? <laughs> oh, he is tender. He's very tender. Um, so I don't know. And I've also been told it's a, a, a deficiency that they do it because they're deficient in something. But I just need to figure it out and have him stop. Yeah. Now, you said he's a youngster then, right? Oh, yes. Okay. All righty. Well, this is a kind of a unfortunate behavior that a lot of dogs have, and it's, we do see it primarily in puppies. So it's something that we can work through, and we can try to kind of train them out of that, but it does take some concerted efforts. And um, some of those products you mentioned are sometimes helpful. Um, and when you feed those either powder or tablets um, to the pet, it imparts a nasty taste to the stool, which, you know, is already kind of a crazy thing to imagine that poop tastes good in some way. Um, but they can be helpful um, as an adjunct to try to help this stop the stop this behavior. Um, but it does take some behavioral techniques as well. And one of the big things that I would tell you with a puppy is we want to supervise the potty time. Um, so we want to actually take the puppy outside, Go have them do their business, praise them, reward them. Oh, what a good doggy, and you know, lay it on heavy, and then use that as a very strong positive reinforcement. 
Then when the poop's there, you pick it up, it's out of there, it's not a reminder. We don't leave it out for long periods of time so they can have that opportunity. Um, no. It becomes hard if we let the doggy go outside and do it at will on his own because there's no way of actually monitoring what's going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, now, and, and a lot of people kind of, and I don't know, maybe in your dog you've seen this where you try to correct them with the poop, and w- what happens if you catch him in, in the act? Well, he, I'm a truck driver, so he usually runs into his crate, and sometimes he stashes it in there, so huh. I'm checking it multiple times a day. Um, he just kind of looks at me and like, what are you, you know, what are you talking about? This is mine. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and for some dogs it can become kind of a bit of a game um, where when we give the correction and tell them no or give that to me and we kind of chase them, it actually perpetuates that behavior and it makes it something fun that they've just got you know some attention over. So we want to make sure that you don't do that and rather when you catch them in the act, you actually want to give them something else to think about. So, you know, a squeaky doggy toy, or something else that you have nearby where you can go, ooh, look at what I got and run the other way. And well, then and hopefully we'll drop the poop and uh, he'll find something that's that more interesting. Well, we uh, so that's really important. Immediately, as soon as he does it, we're very diligent about picking it up. But sometimes if like one of us is sleeping and the other one is driver, and you know you can't just stop in the middle of the road and pick it up. So no, we have to yeah. pull over and by then he's already created it. I mean, he's got it in his little cave and he, you know, he's just so proud of it. Yeah. Not, yeah. And you did habit. mention some concerns. You mentioned some concerns with um, like a health problem. And in a young pup, I'd say probably not very likely that there's a, a health problem. But we would want to check a stool sample, make sure he doesn't have any kind of intestinal parasites. Um, for older pets that do this behavior, we look at nutritional problems or metabolic problems. But I'd say it's probably nothing medical. It's more just a, a training type thing we're just going to have to get through. And, and there's hope. So I, you know, keep up with some of those remedies over the counter and um, you know try some of those techniques and I think we'll kind of get him past that and get him to focus on something else. This is Dr. Debbie with Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. It's time for another Nutrilife pet tip. Our pets are so stoic and they rarely show it when they have pain. But as they get older and become a senior animal, and that can be around six or seven years old, they may get arthritis or joint weakness. If your dog has begun to tire easily or just walking for them has become a little bit difficult, these are the symptoms of arthritis and joint weakness. Now the best medicine is prevention and you should walk with your dog regularly. You two will bond. That was a Nutrilife pet tip. Visit NutrilifePet.com. Sadly, many dogs suffer with weak joints, affecting their ability to walk. Thankfully, there's Ultra Joint and Liver Support from Nutrilife Pet with Sam E, the proven supplement for joint health. Ultra Joint and Liver Support from Nutrilife Pet can help restore your animal's quality of life. Buy one box of Ultra Joint and Liver Support and get one free by using coupon code Animal Radio. Order yours at www.nutrilifepet.com and get your pet up and running. Did you know canine caviar diets are formulated with common health concerns in mind, such as diabetes, cancer, and kidney disease? You see, canine caviar uses low GI carbs, which reduce hunger and prolong physical endurance. Free of GMO, gluten, hormones, steroids, and antibiotics, canine caviar's five-star dog and cat foods are the only alkaline-based foods in the world, and that promotes a healthy lifestyle for your furry family. Find out more at caninecaviar.com. Did that get your attention? That's how it works on your dog, correcting undesirable behaviors. It's important to handle any pet behavioral issues with love and care rather than pain or punishment. The Pet Corrector allows you to safely change unwanted behaviors in your dog, like excessive barking, stealing food or shoes, or chasing people and dogs. With a simple, you can stop all these problems. Find out more at www.companyofanimals.us and get the dog you've always wanted. Right, Max? Fido Friendly Magazine presents the 7th Annual Month-Long Pet Adoption Tour, Get Your Licks on Route 66, with advocate sponsor Shelby, a magical holiday tale coming soon to DVD, along with community sponsors Zeus Dog Toys, Pet Curin, Dermagic, and Blue Dog Bakery, media sponsor Animal Radio. The tour travels from L.A. to Chicago, powered by Sprint Reynolds, stopping at shelters along the way to support adoption events. 
Log on to get your licks on Route66.com to find out where the tour stops near you. Hi, this is Justin Tyler Ferguson from Modern Family. I'm on Animal Radio. Adopt a pet. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. It's Animal Radio. Celebrating our connection with your pets. Here's the toll-free number, 1-866-405-8405. Also ask your questions from the Animal Radio app. Thanks so much, Judy, for coming back. Last week, I was a little lost, as everybody can attest to. Aww. And uh, didn't know what to do when. Thankfully, I'm back in line today. You, you, you I'm keeping have... you back to the schedule. Yes, you certainly have. Uh, Lori Brooks, in just a few minutes, we'll visit with you. What do you got going on in the newsroom? Well, there's a couple I would love to meet. These guys have made headlines by their bed. They made a bed that was big enough for them and all their animals. And so we're going to tell you, how big was their bed? <laughs> Ours would have to be huge. Well, that's exciting. This that's one gonna, is. That's a fun story. I can't wait for that. That's on the way with Lori. Uh, Wednesday, just around the corner, as it is every week from about now. It's just around the corner in a few days. It happens every week. I'm pretty sure I've checked my calendar. It it's consistently happens, oh, about every Wednesday. And we have, on Wednesdays, our Wacky Wednesday where you upload your wacky pet pictures to our Facebook page and you can win great prizes uh, for the most shares and likes. And this week, what have you put together, Miss Francis? We have a great product from Gopher. It's a dog restraint for your car. A dog restraint? Yeah, and it works with most body harnesses or just the safety belt and the shoulder restraint that you have in regular cars. And it allows your dog to move more freely while maintaining boundaries. And when the seatbelt locks, your dog's movements are immediately restricted until the momentum of the vehicle allows the belt to release. Mm. So gopher, it's a safer way to gopher car rides with your pet. I like that. And it's so important. You shouldn't have your animals in your car running around anywhere, should you? Certainly not on your lap. If you want to pick that up, be sure to head on over to our Facebook page at Animal Radio and upload your Wacky Wednesday pictures. Hey, folks, this is Jackson Galaxy. You're listening to Animal Radio. Please do everyone a favor, spay or neuter your animals today. You're listening to Animal Radio. Find us at AnimalRadio.com. Log on, learn more. This is an Animal Radio News Update, brought to you by Doctors Foster & Smith Pet Pharmacy, with prescription medications and over-the-counter products like Advantix Flea and Tick Medication, delivered right to your door. Learn more at fosterandsmith.com. I'm Lori Brooks. 500 ordinary people slash wannabe scientists and dog lovers from all over the world have contributed data to a new study of what goes on inside the minds of their dogs. They all did this by playing games with their pets at home and then submitting their information to help researchers find out more about canine cognitive skills and problem solving. So, What did they learn? Well, from one of these several game-like tests that they did, they found that dogs rely more on their memory than their sense of smell to find a hidden treat. Most of us think dogs use their sense of smell for everything, but actually they use a whole range of senses when they're problem-solving. All of this information, by the way, was collected through a website called Dognition.com, which was started by the very same doctor who founded the Canine Cognition Center, the famous place at Duke University. What is the equivalent of a board of supervisors in Camden County, New Jersey, which is just outside Philadelphia, has voted unanimously to prohibit pet stores from selling animals from puppy mills. The representative said they're standing up for animals of their county and want to ensure that no one is profiting off of the inhumane treatment of puppy mills. And they add that several other counties and towns from all over the country have inquired with them about the legislation and how they might go about enacting it themselves. Have you ever known an animal that did not want to sleep in bed with you? I didn't think so. I don't either. So how lucky are this couple's five cats and two dogs? Because this pair made this huge, gigantic, 11-foot-wide bed in their bedroom that takes up most of the room, but they say is big enough to share with all of their pets at the same time. We have, uh, by the way, the link on our website where you can see a picture of this wonderful creation. I'm Lori Brooks. Get more breaking animal news anytime at AnimalRadio.com. 
This has been an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Pharmacy. With everyday low prices on products like Quellin and Rimadil delivered right to your door with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Learn more at fosterandsmith.com. Hi, this is Elaine Hendricks on Animal Radio. Please adopt a pet. Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies have a vet VIPPS accredited online pharmacy covering all your pet's needs from heartworm medications and anti-inflammatories like Rimadil to non-prescription items like canine Advantix flea and tick preventive. Doctors Foster and Smith has your pet covered. We'll even contact your vet for you, all with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Low prices every day with free shipping on orders over $49. Shop online at fosterandsmith.com because your pet's health and happiness come first. Did you know canine caviar diets are formulated with common health concerns in mind, such as diabetes, cancer, and kidney disease? You see, canine caviar uses low GI carbs, which reduce hunger and prolong physical endurance. Free of GMO, gluten, hormones, steroids, and antibiotics, Canine Caviar's five-star dog and cat foods are the only alkaline-based foods in the world, and that promotes a healthy lifestyle for your furry family. Find out more at CanineCaviar.com. Hi, this is Paul Reiser, and you're listening to Animal Radio. Every minute you're here, you're not harming someone else. I don't know what that means. <laughs> You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. This healthy helping of Animal Radio is brought to you by Solid Gold Holistic Pet Food. Offering a wide range of holistic dry and wet food for both dogs and cats. You can choose from a variety of grain and gluten-free as well as healthy and whole grain options. All with ingredients you can trust. And isn't that what matters? No meat byproduct meal, corn, wheat, soy, sugar, artificial preservatives, or flavors added. Just the good stuff. It's solid gold. Thanks, guys, for underwriting Animal Radio. Hi, who's this? Uh, Gay Wallace. Hi, Gay. How are you doing? Okay. Where are you calling from today? California. Where in California? Calamesa. Calamesa. Are you listening on Coast or XM? Coast. Listening on coast. Very good. Thank you very much. You're on with Dr. Debbie. Well, what can I do for you today? Um, I was wondering if you could tell me which is probably the healthiest uh, purebred dog you can get, uh, like a medium-sized. It's the biggest. Okay. I don't want a big, huge dog. My, I had a red chow, and she died two and a half years ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So currently you don't have any uh, dogs or other pets right now? I have a cat. Okay, so preferably you want to have a dog that's going to get along with the kitty. Well, I don't know if that's possible or not. She's a feral cat, and she's been with me inside the house since I've had her, you know, and the dog, the chow was outside dog. So she doesn't really know any other pet, so I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, there's a lot of things that we probably be wanting to know when you're looking for a pet. Um, some of the personal uh, household things that go on, what kind of pet are you looking for other than a medium-sized pet? Um, any kind of activities? Um, are you, do you like to go out and exercise with your dog, or do you well, want a pet I that's just going to sit on? I don't do a lot of exercise. I walk some, but I have a pacemaker in, and so I don't can't really exercise a lot. Okay. And uh, do you have a preference? Because another big thing we always um, counsel owners is that are we looking for a long-haired dog, one that you're going to groom, one that's uh, no, you take one to the that groomer and have to be groomed. Okay, one and that I just kind of shed. Female. Okay, well, females are definitely, I'd say, some very uh, good pets, um, especially if you're looking kind of a, a single pet home. Um, and if you're looking for more of a quiet pet, th- there's a lot of different pets we could look at in different breeds. The trick is, and, and your question's kind of tough, because there isn't just one breed that we would look at that is kind of a, the best fit for, for your situation or for everyone's situation. It's always going to be a little different. Um, so there's a lot of breeds that have really good attributes um, as far as that are quiet, that are you know smaller to medium dogs, that have that kind of hair coat. Um, but I'd also encourage you, you know, it's, it's all about saving lives and adopting. So sometimes the purebred isn't always the way we go. Yeah. And, and I, I love that Cocker the, Spaniels, but I know they have a lot of ear problems. 
Well, they can, and certainly cocker spaniels have, you know, the potential for ear problems, some skin problems, Mm -hmm. um, definitely some allergies, some eye issues. But when we look at a lot of the different dog breeds, you could almost make that case for every breed. Really? Um, So if I pick a breed, um, you know, even like a Jack Russell Terrier, um, they have a lot of allergy problems. They're very high-energy dogs, so they can develop some anxiety problems inside the home if they're not exercised fully. Mm -hmm. So I could kind of go through every breed and find a couple things to counter that argument and say that that might not be the best breed. I think really... The biggest thing that I would encourage you to is to to find a pet with a personality that's best suited for you, and hopefully every everything else will come along with that package. But uh, to to go to the shelters and look for the smaller breed dogs that kind of fit the physical characteristics that you're looking for, and get to know that personality because if they have a you know that active personality, they want to go run and play and jump, and they're very athletic. That doesn't sound like that's going to be a good fit for you. Um, yeah, well, and the Heinz def- is usually healthier, right? Yes, absolutely. And, and the Heinz 57, the, the benefit of that is you still get a lot of the good breed qualities, mm-hmm. but it kind of gets the bad things get diluted out. So we run into less problems with inbreeding and where some of those genetic problems can be perpetuated by generation by generation. So I would definitely encourage you to look for that mixed breed that might just, you know, sparkle your eye and and, uh, look like the the pet that's going to fit for your home. Yeah. Okay. So I hope that helps some. um, And uh, let us know if you do find a new friend. We'd love to hear about that baby. Okay. I'm not going to do anything. I'm supposed to go on a cruise and I don't want to do anything until I get back from that. Because, you know, you'd have to leave it 12 days by itself. Right, and it's always good to make sure you're fully prepared to, you know, take on that responsibility, whether it be the time commitments, uh, you know, just to have your life in the same spot where, you know, you can welcome a new pet into the home. So that's a very good decision. Yeah. Thanks for your call, Gay. We appreciate it. 1-866-405-8405. Send us pictures. We always love to see pictures of the new family members there. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. Dogs or cats, horse or emu, animals are people too. Some people teach their dog to sit, maybe shake hands, or catch a frisbee. But a New Jersey woman tried to teach her dog how to dial 911 and ended up in a lot of trouble. Sylvia D'Antonio admitted placing three late-night 911 calls to the Parsippany, New Jersey Police Department. The police dispatcher was alarmed because when the calls were picked up, the only communication was heavy breathing. The calls were traced and three squad cars raced to D'Antonio's home only to find her trying to teach her German shepherd how to call for help. The police were not amused and slapped her with a summons for disorderly conduct. Maybe she should have tried teaching him how to order a pizza first. I'm Britt Savage for Animal Radio. Animals are people too. Animal Radio. This is Animal Radio, baby. It is with great honor I present to you the dog father. You may kiss his ring. Actually, where is your ring? One. I think someone stole your I'm ring. Wearing, I'm not wearing one <laughs> today. You must have lost it or something like that. Joey Volani, ladies and gentlemen, on Animal Radio. What's up? So you know what? I, I want to talk about accessories. So. Uh oh, not like that, uh, clothing that, uh, and stuff like that. So really? it's it's well above clothing, okay. my friend. Okay. Okay. Clothing is, is old hat now. I was at a um at a at a show this weekend, and um they had some new and exciting things, and my favorite thing were fake eyelashes for dogs. Oh, you what? gotta be joking! No. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, no. well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. it's pretty cool. I mean, you don't put them like you would put them on a person, you know, right? Right on the um, eyelid itself, you put it a little bit above with the same type of glue, and they, and they stand up. It looks some dogs that looked really good on others, it just look ridiculous. It guess it depended on on the whole presentation. But not only that, they have now stick nail polish that you can use. They have um, hair extension. They have <laughs> wigs. They have colors that you can put in. This is just um, wrong, ladies lot of, and gentlemen. It's cool stuff. It really is. And anyone that thinks that the dog don't like it, the attention that the pets get.
it. They actually, they absolutely love it. Um, as soon as you put it in, um, they know. Yeah. I don't know how they know, but they know. That's exactly. You know, at what point did we go too far? But I, I agree with Joey. I think he's right that the animal knows something is up, and they appreciate the attention. They appreciate it. Some just strut. Hal, haven't you seen them? They like it. And they know everybody's looking at them. Oh, you guys are goofy. I, I got to check out those eyelashes after yeah. the show. That's it's, what I'm going to Well, check. I got to be honest with you. Um, of course, I brought back a, um, a few pairs to try. Oh, um, good. So we'll try know, them I out. To. I had to. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, just when you go to your groomer, um, you know, you can ask them. And a lot of groomers probably don't don't even know that these exist yet. But um, they're in their local, they're in their catalogs, unfortunately. Um, well, or fortunate, maybe. Um, groomers don't have too many outlets um, to buy their stuff. So there's like three or four national catalogs that they're in. So tell your groomer to order some and um, find them for you and give it a try. It's a lot of fun. That's just weird. Hey, Joey, can I ask you, at what kind of a show? Is it a pet accessory show? Well, what we do is we have um, professional pet grooming shows where we have conferences and education and you have um, grooming competition and has the newest and greatest products. And um, the biggest one that back in, in the world is in Hershey, Pennsylvania. That, that just happened um, a couple weeks ago. Judy is right now attaching eyelashes to Ladybug, the studio stunt dog. <laughs> they are awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait till I take her out and everybody sees her with her pink toenails and eyelashes. Crazy, she has such big That's eyes right. anyway. How cute. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. You know, we were just talking about that otter that uses that uh, inhaler for asthma. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that maybe we could teach the cat to use an inhaler. I mean, if they can teach an otter to use an inhaler, how come we cannot teach our cat to use one? You know, I've seen something before. I've heard it mentioned there is some kind of product, but it's kind of hard to hold the cat and put it on its muzzle to make them inhale. If you just tuned in, the Seattle Aquarium, they have an otter who has asthma, and they've taught it to use its own inhaler, (laughs) just like the one I have here. And, uh, of course, I just use it for the fun of it. But uh, the uh, the otter, actually, it's the same medicine that uh, the humans that get. That human juice, yep, same so thing. So it's helping them out. Is he here on the phone? Oh, this is cool. Hey, Harrison, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Harrison Forb, back on Animal Radio. What are you up to lately, buddy? You know, how it's so crazy how so much stuff is going on now. I, I look back at my old radio notes from 20 years ago. <laughs> They've changed. You really had to... You had to dig around to find stories, you know, it was, and now it's just such a different world. Well, everybody loves their animals, and now the animals that 25 years ago were sleeping in the doghouse are now jostling for room in your bed, or at least with me. Exactly. And I'll sleep in any weird position just to accommodate my so animals. So you don't disturb them. Yes, yeah, I don't want them to lose their beauty sleep, for yes, heaven's exactly. sakes. <laughs> Then they'll annoy you all the next day and make you pay for it. Well, now, you've been training dogs for a while. How long have you been doing that? I don't know. It's kind of hard to put a definitive start date on it. I mean, I started working with a trainer when I was eight, so I was doing some more formal type of training on my own dogs, uh, you know, when I was nine, ten years old, and uh, I guess that was kind of the start of it. But, you know, I mean, there's still people that are old school. My son got a puppy, and he got a German Shepherd puppy, and he was under the understanding that he shouldn't even begin training until that puppy was six months old, so he kind of let it just run around the backyard. When should training begin? Well, I do a lot with a dog from five weeks to 20 weeks during wow. kind of that imprinting phase, mm-hmm. but it's not really training as much as imprinting. I'm doing a ton of socialization I do a lot of nerve, uh, different things to get them used to a lot of different surfaces, loud noises, going to the store, getting in and out of a car, all those kind of things during that phase. So it's not really teaching a sit, down, stay necessarily. When I was a teenager going back and forth to Europe, when I first started doing more of the police dog side of it, you know, the old trainers over there, they exposed their dogs to tons of training from the time they were 6 and 12 months old. But... From seven months to ten months, they really didn't do anything at all with them except just let them. They had tiles all around the training field, so the dogs would watch the older dogs work, but they didn't do anything with them. They said that's when the body grows and the mind is on Hmm. deep freeze for a couple of months so far as learning. And so I think those kind of things are where we get a little bit of this mislabeling like your son had where, they think, well, they're not supposed to train until they're six months old. Well, that's not really true. 
Uh, you know what I mean? I think some of the semantics get tied up and lost in the translation from time to time. We are with Harrison Forbes, a bevy of knowledge. And, you know, I could probably sit here for hours and just learn so much. <laughs> but I want three tips. Can you give us three tips you would say are probably the key tips dog owners need to know about training? I mean, I think uh, do your research on your breed or your type of dog if you have a mixed breed dog. Find out what makes them tick and what they're predisposed to, you know, uh, and use that to your advantage. If you've got a dog that's got a herding background, Start using training games and things that rely on herding instincts. So use all the information to your advantage and try and work your training through those natural predispositions. Expose them to as much as you can. And then I guess last one, you, you want a good, solid, quality nutrition and good vet care to keep them in top shape and keep them in working condition. I, I had this conversation with somebody yesterday that was trying to do some uh, Schultzen training with a dog, and they were feeding their dog this horrible food. And I said, when's the last time you saw an Olympian uh, eating a Happy Meal to, <laughs> every day for the three months prior to getting ready for the Olympics? I mean, you know, you got to feed them like you're feeding yourself. Which reminds me, you just partnered with Solid Gold, which is, a, you know, a holistic pet food brand. Great food. Tell me more about them and how you got involved with them. Yeah, you know, I've ne I don't think I've been more excited about uh, a food partnership. It's just uh, the founder, uh, Cynthia McGill, the whole food was born out of her own necessity. She was a breeder of Great Danes and showed Great Danes, and she was frustrated because the same bloodlines of Great Danes in Europe were living to be 15 and 16 years old, and she couldn't wow. figure out what the difference was. So instead of just scratching her head about it, she went over to Europe and spent a lot of time and found out that the way she was raising them was the same, the amount of vet care was the same, all that. The big difference was the nutrition. So she started using the formulas that they were using, and consequently her one male dog ended up living to be a 16-year-old. So it started out of the true love, not a, hey, I want to start a dog food company, but what can I do to make my own animals live longer and healthier? And that's still, I mean, today when you talk to her, She's in her 80s, and still, that's her driving force. She mm -hmm. is interested in what is going to help mine and, by default, your animals live longer and healthier. Yeah, that's the way it has always been about solid gold. So tell me, you have animals of your own. I assume they eat solid gold. What flavors do they like? What recipes? Because they have a whole bunch of them. They do. I've got two senior dogs that, uh, and one that is... Uh, half narcoleptic, and so he sleeps about 22 hours a day. So he eats literally the same amount of food. He's a 130-pound Boceron that my 12-pound Shih Tzu mix eats. So yeah. they eat almost the same uh, amount of food, but his metabolism has slowed so much that I really have to be careful with him. So for him, I've got him on that Fit and Fabulous from Solid Gold, which he's done very well on. And, you know, both salons have that great, when they're in really good health, their coat looks like it's almost wet. It shines so well. So he's doing great on that. And then I've got a young working dog, a Dutch Shepherd, that came over from Europe, and it's out of a bloodline that I've dealt with for over 20 years. And so he is getting the barking at the moon, which I love. And that's also one of my favorite rock songs. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's a super high protein, 41%. For active dogs, you know, he's in constant motion all the time. So he has to have a very different formula. And you're not usually going to find that premium food in Walmart. Where are you going to find <laughs> solid gold? Uh, I mean, you can go online uh, and get solid gold. But it's also, you know, Petco, lots of independent retailers, uh, solidgoldpet.com. You can go there and find the retailer in your area. Judy, can you put links over there for uh, where we can find those? Uh, find will. all retailers for solid gold. It's important all that your uh, animals are on a solid, good, healthy, balanced diet. It, and I encourage you to check out Solid Gold. Harrison Forbes, the most amazing. Here's a guy that uh, I wish I had his job. Uh, he was traveling all around the world. Sitting on the radio. Well, anytime you want to switch, buddy, I'll travel all around. Celebrating the connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White and groomer Joey Villani. And here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. I wanted to say that there's two ways that you can reach out to us, and you can call us, you know, a toll-free 1-866-405-8405. That phone, by the way, is open all week long, not just on the show day. 
So you can call it anytime, 24-7. Not that we'll answer it 24-7, but <laughs> you can call it, certainly. And uh, you can ask your questions from the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android and BlackBerry. i got to throw that in there. It's a free download. Thanks to those folks over at Doctors Fosters and Smith. So go download that puppy right now. Uh, on today's show, in just a couple of minutes, we're going to be talking to Jason Feldman. He's a realtor that specializes in pet-friendly housing. Hard to believe that there is such a thing. Uh, you know, the animal industries, there's lots of little niches. Well, I think people are starting to realize it's a $60 billion a year industry. Well, you see the car makers now. Sure. Everybody's just finding their little niche for this. And it's hard to find good pet-friendly housing. Uh, Dr. I Debbie, like to rebuild my house. I, that's what I was going to ask you: is <laughs> Did you have pets before you moved into your house? The current house we have, we actually purchased because of our dogs, because we had to have a pool for them to swim. Uh, we had to have tile on all the main level, a dog, a uh, kind of uh, area in the laundry room where they could get fed and everything, taking care of their teeth brushed, all of that kind of stuff, all in those vicinities. So yeah, yeah, we bought <laughs> specifically for our dogs. Okay, well, this guy has he made a career out of doing this, finding houses that are especially for those pet-friendly people. And he'll also tell you how you can sell your house if you're selling it to maybe not a pet-friendly person, but just somebody who just doesn't need to know that you had animals. <laughs> That's on the way right here on Animal Radio. Uh, Lori, what are you working on over there in the newsroom? Okay. Uh, well, let me ask you a question okay. first. Give me, like, the sound that a dog makes. Woof. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, a horse. <laughs> Oh, very good, students. Very good. Okay, what sound does a giraffe make? Pretty good, Nobody huh? seems to know. Uh, I don't know. Well, that, was my, that was my giraffe imitation right there. It, just, it doesn't make sound, no, does it? No, I don't know. Sound? Does make sound? I don't know. I've never heard a giraffe. I'll tell you what it does in the next newscast, okay? Oh, I'm going to stick around We're for gonna that. We're going to learn yeah. a new animal sound. I learned so much on this show. I wonder if it's some of those little see and play little round things that you had. It would a point giraffe to makes giraffe. this noise. Now, I, don't, yeah. I, I would have known that. Uh, thanks for this news story. Not as cheery as the last hour's news story. Oh, I guess it is cheery. <laughs> This is, uh, you know, in South Korea, they eat dogs, right? Which is horrible. Because, oh, speaking of cheery, how? Yes. What is that? Well, 29 dogs that were part of a meat farm in South Korea, they have arrived in San Diego and they're looking for forever homes. Part of 100 dogs Woo-hoo! that were rescued by the Humane Society International. And Humane Society International not only rescued those dogs, but paid the farmer to transition to other crops. So that weren't live. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So the dogs are in San Diego. They're mostly Mastiffs, Jindu mixes, and Chihuahuas. Which Chihuahuas? I love the Chihuahuas. Meat you get off a Chihuahua. Oh, it's exactly what I was going to say. That's exactly what I was going to say. But if I had said it, you all would have you all would have gotten on my case. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Let's go to the phones for your calls right now. Toll free one eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. Hi, Jake. How you doing? Hey, how you guys doing? Very good. Where are you calling from? Um, I'm actually in Parker, Arizona. Parker, are you driver? Yes, I am. Okay, you are on with Dr. Debbie. Well, hi. Um, I got hi. Hi, how are you? Great. Um, I got a cat. I think he has dandruff. Okay. Okay, and I brush him, and uh, you know I don't wash him or anything, but it just seems like. You know, the top of his back and stuff, it's all, it's all flaky. I thought it was dirt at first, but it just, you know, it just keeps, um, showing up. And, uh, I'm not sure what I can do to help him out with that. Okay. Does he come with you in the truck? Or is he back at home? No, he's, no, he's at home. Okay. And, and do you notice any kind of problems with him? Does he seem to scratch excessively? Um, have any problems with those areas that you see the dandruff? No, huh? Not at all. Hmm. And um, does your kitty live inside or an outdoor kitty? He he stays inside. Um, every now and then he'll go out out in the backyard for about ten minutes or so. He just kind of sits on the porch and then he comes back in. <laughs> kind of checks out things, looks around the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, just to get a little bit of fresh air, and then you know he comes right back in. With the dandruff that he has on his back, is there any kind of hair loss? Does he have any patches or anything? Not any patches, but he, you know, he's always uh, shedding a little bit. Yeah, well, that will never get rid of, <laughs> not entirely. Right, that's right. But I, you know, I brush him uh, at least once a week. But uh, well, I'm hoping he, to brush the dandruff out, but it doesn't work. 
Yeah, and you know, a lot of kitties can get, um, there's dandruff, which will associate with a medical problem, and then there's going to be kind of what I call the typical kitty dandruff. And, you know, there are some real medical things that we look at. Um, you know, it is not an unheard of thing to have uh, types of mites or little skin parasites that can cause kind of a flakiness. Um, generally with that, we're going to have a, a scratchy kitty. Uh, we're going to have a kitty that you touch that area and you run your fingers over in a little scratching motion and they're going to go, ooh, golly, this really feels funky. Um, so with those situations, we're going to have a, a more uncomfortable cat. Um, there are certainly also things like ringworm, which is actually not a worm, um, but it's a fungus um, that can cause some scaliness, some types of dry skin that we might see in those areas. But if I'm assuming all those things don't apply to your kitty, um, there are a lot of cats out there that have dandruff, and it, it can be somewhat a nutritional thing, and, and somewhat it is also just a, a grooming type um, issue. Um, so if the kitties don't groom themselves very vigorously, and I see this in a lot of maybe chubby kitties or cats that just have a really dense hair coat and can't get quite through it, um, they will get kind of a flakiness. So your efforts at home, definitely, I would maybe up the the, the frequency of your brushing um, to try to get in there a bit more frequently because when you use a brushing or a, um, a comb technique, you're actually spreading the natural oils around the skin and stimulating that hair. So um, that's a good thing, and I would try to increase your frequency on that. The other thing which I would look at would be maybe using some fatty acids as a supplement um, to your cat's diet. And uh, it's sometimes a little challenging to get cats to accept this, um, but there are liquid forms, which are maybe a bit easier than a capsule to get down a cat. But that can be helpful to kind of help from the inside out. And fatty acids help to keep the hair coat in good condition and help to minimize dryness. It doesn't necessarily stop that shedding, <laughs> but that may help to kind of keep that hair coat in a little bit better condition. So I, I would really try the, those two things and, and work on that and, unless you, you know, perceive that there's some other kind of skin problem or discomfort there. Okay. Uh, and, and are you able to do the, the brushing? Uh, does Kitty sit for that pretty good? Um, yeah. Yeah, I do it. Well, I do it once a week. That's when I come home. But, um, you know, I'll try to uh, get my wife to do it, you know, a little more often while I'm gone, you know. And then I'll, I'll look for that fatty acid stuff and, and uh, you know, see it. I'll maybe go to a, do you think like a PetSmart or something would carry that? Yeah, um, you can either get fatty acids at your um, local veterinarian, um, pet stores, um, you know, any of those type of places. Um, and just it's a nutritional product, um, so uh, it's usually pretty well taken um, as far as uh, you know minimal side effects, and and it can really help. So, um, and I'm an advocate for you know things that will help with the the least um, uh, annoyance to the pet <laughs> and uh, the the most ease for the pet owner. So give that a try, and I hope that works out for you. This is Dr. Debbie with Animal Radio. This portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by Neutral Life Ultra Joint and Liver Support. Mm, good stuff for your pet's joints. If they have difficulty walking or running, I encourage you to check out Ultra Joint and Liver Support from Neutral Life Pet with Sammy. Buy one box and get one free. For Animal Radio listeners, you got to put in the code Animal Radio and you'll get one box free. It's like 50% off. Here's their phone number. It's toll free. Call 1-844-PET-SAM-E. That's 1-844-PET-S-A-M-E. Or visit NeutralifePet.com. Hey, Bob, where are you calling from? The Woodlands. The wood, where is that? Texas. Texas. The Woodlands of Texas. Okay. Uh, you are on with Dr. Debbie. Oh, good. Well, hi, Bob. Oh, well, hi, Debbie. Here's my question. We have a, a Yorkie puppy who weighs right at a pound and um she was born july the 18th and when we took her to the vet he the first vet said she's too small to give a sentinel heartworm and flea tab Mm -hmm. and then we went to a second vet who said no you can go ahead and give her one because uh you just have to break it in half and he gave me an 11 to 25 pound have, okay. Which still seems like too much. So I, I called Sentinel on their 800 number, and they said that they they don't recommend it for any dog less than two pounds. Yeah, yeah. So the, the question is, what kind of flea treatment? I, I want to get her on some kind of a heartworm regimen. 
and I also would like to get her on some kind of a flea regimen. Um, right. Absolutely. And, and that's is she, she the only dog you have? She's the only dog, yes. Up to right now, have they used regular deworming products on her for other purposes, as far as for, like, you know, the intestinal worms? They hopefully yeah. dewormed her in those respects. Right. right. Yeah, we used okay. um, a couple different pills. One was a pill and one was kind of a, a liquid. But neither one of those, one was for um, some kind of worms, the other was for some kind of uh, parasite. Couldn't think of the word. So, okay. yeah. again, I'm back to, you know, when, when can you do something for fleas and what can you do? Right now we use Dawn detergent, which <laughs> actually... Good old Dawn. <laughs> yeah, well, actually it works. Um, and, but I hate to give her a bath every week, but that's what we're doing. Yeah, um, and let me ask you: Are you do you have a lot of flea problems in your area? No, no. well, yeah, in the area we do, but we have a screened-in porch. <laughs> we take her out there, and uh, she has a little puppy pad, so she doesn't. So she's get... probably not one of those dogs that spends a lot of time outdoors roaming the <laughs> great <laughs> yonder. <laughs> Zero. A, a one-pound York, you could. Yeah. A one-pound Yorkie could easily be um, a prey for, like, a large uh, bird or something like that, so we do have to be careful. Um, but, so here's the question. Heartworm okay. and um, flea protection, what would you okay. recommend? Well, you know, every region is a little bit different in what their veterinarians were probably most comfortable with. Um I do have, you know, definitely I share the concerns with a small dog and using some products. Um, and I would always fall back on the manufacturer because they're going to be the ones that stand behind the product legally. So if they say not to use the the heartworm flea medication for her, then I'm going to honor that. Um, for smaller pets in my office, we very commonly will use, as far as heartworm protection, we'll use um, Heart Guard, um, which is a type of a monthly chewable, um, as well as... Um, uh, uh, interceptor. And uh, those are some of the products that we'll use in our office. As far as flea okay, tick products, right. you can kind of switch things up a little bit and you can try some different things. And, you know, regular bathing with Dawn is, is great to just kind of remove the fleas, but it doesn't do a lot to really give us some long sustained protection. Right. Um, so we, we would certainly look at maybe something like, um, I'm a fan of Frontline uh, when it comes to, um, flea and tick control. And that's the type, either a topical spot on, um, or spray on that you um, uh, can apply to the pet. Um, so it's nice and convenient when we have one product that kind of does everything, but you might kind of have to mix and match um, right. just so that we're keeping in mind her small size and, uh, you know, covering your bases with uh, you know, all the right. different things we've got to worry about with our puppy dogs in the infectious disease world. Well, I appreciate it. We've had two dogs in our lives. One lived 18 years and one lived 17 years. This is our third. And... Um, <clears throat> Um, but this is by far the smallest. I gotta, I gotta yeah. ask here. I gotta butt in. You know, we just got a, a Chihuahua, and it weighs at a baby, at a puppy, at ten weeks old. It's a pound and a half, almost two pounds. Right. Is that kind of small for a Yorkie to be a pound? I mean, that's pretty small. Well, she was a runt. Uh, her brothers towered over. Her, um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, she, she's awfully. She weighed fourteen ounces when we took wow. her to the vet the first time, and. And she was uh, seven weeks old. Yeah, and some of those um, breeds, we definitely can see some lines where they breed towards the really tiny, the really small, almost teacup type size. Um, they're good and bad with that. <laughs> they're easy to carry around. A lot of people really love the love the really tiny ones. But you do have to be a little bit um, on the watch for you know some genetic things, and then definitely the size related problems of just kind of getting underfoot and uh, you know being a tiny dog in a big world. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks for the call, Bob. This is Dr. Debbie on Animal Radio. This portion of Animal Radio was underwritten by Solid Gold, Venison, Pollock, Duck, Quail, Cold Water Salmon. No, that's not the list of your hungry. favorite restaurants. <laughs> Solid Gold Holistic Pet Food offers a wide variety of sustainably sourced options in both grain and gluten-free and healthy whole grain recipes. No ingredients sourced from China ever. Try Solid Gold today. Get your plenty card at Exxon or Mobile and start earning points at lots of places. So I get points for filling up at Exxon? You sure do. What about getting coffee at Mobile? Points. Streaming TV shows on Hulu? Definitely. Points on my AT&T wireless bill? Yep. Buying soap? At Rite Aid. Buying you a birthday present? Points at Macy's. Visiting your parents? No. You get marriage points. Oh. 
Exxon and Mobil are the only fuel brands that are part of Plenty, the rewards program that lets you earn points at one place and use them at another. Join Plenty for free through a participating Exxon or Mobil station today. Terms and limitations apply. See Plenty.com slash partners for details. Stella and Chewy's believes that selecting the best food is one of the most important decisions an owner can make for their pet. They believe that pets thrive when they're fed the same diet they'd get in the wild. Dogs and cats are carnivores, and meal mixers are a quick and convenient way to mix a little raw nutrition and great taste into their diet. Made from premium raw ingredients like grass-fed meat and cage-free poultry with organic fruits and vegetables. Meal mixers help kickstart your kibble. Learn more at StellaAndChewies.com. How strong is Allegra D? It's jumping in a pile of leaves with my kids. Strong. Allegra D, a fast, non-drowsy antihistamine plus a powerful decongestant that starts relieving your toughest allergy symptoms in one hour. Yep, I am going to take that hayride strong. It's breathing free for 24 hours, even after a day of apple picking strong. Allegra D, strong relief for your allergy symptoms, guaranteed or your money back. Visit Allegra.com. Use only as directed. I'm a pair of designer shoes so expensive my owner had to give up half decaf skim vanilla lattes just to afford me. So you can imagine my terror when a pipe burst and the apartment started flooding. There I was, trapped in the closet, water rushing all around me. But what was I to do? I'm a six-inch stiletto. It's not like I can run. Your stuff can't protect itself. That's why the GEICO Insurance Agency helps make it easy to switch and save on renter's insurance. Renter's insurance will cover personal property loss or damage as well as provide liability protection. Visit GEICO.com today. Hi, everybody. This is Frankie Avalon, and I love Animal Radio. Keep listening. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at It's Animal Radio. And if you're crazy about your animals, so are we. And this is your radio show. We'd love to talk to you. 1 866 405 8405. And in just a few minutes, we're going to talk to Susan Sim. She's out on, on somewhere on Route 66 adopting animals as part of the Get Your Licks on Route 66 adoption tour. And uh, she'll be checking in anytime now. First, let's find out what's going on in the newsroom with Miss Lori Brooks. Well, Hal, there is some good news to tell you about today on the front about kids and how they develop allergies to animals. But there's it's good news. I heard that if you expose your animals to your kids young, mm-hmm. they'll have they'll less allergies. Less then. allergies as yeah. they grow older. You know, they keep this saying, takes that a step further. Oh, wow. Well, they keep saying mm-hmm. allergies, but I'm a little confused. Is that to pets only or is that other allergies that a child might have? Do you know, have? doctor? I think it's going back to even like when you're a kid and you're allowed to play in the mud and the dirt and you're exposed to all those good bacteria. Um, Same thing with animals. So there's a beneficial effect. Okay. We'll we'll learn more about that in just a couple of minutes right here on Animal Radio. Let's go to the phones for your calls first. Toll free at 1-866-405-8405. I believe we have Vaughn on the phone? Yes, sir. Hey, Vaughn. How are you doing? Ah, pretty good. Where are you calling from? Yeah, right now, I just went through, I'm going through Needles, California. Ooh, must be hot out there, huh? Yeah, it's about 105. Oh. Okay, well, you are on with Dr. Debbie. Who, who are we talking about today? What, uh, the cat or the dog? The cat. Okay, what's up with your cat? Okay, we uh, was living in one place, and we decided it needs to be bigger, so we jerked it out and put another modular unit in. But before we moved over the modular unit, he just seemed like he liked to urinate in the floor all the time, in the hallway. Well, after yes. we moved out of there, now he's wanting to go in the living room. Okay. And and when he's urinating, where is he urinating exactly? In the center of the room, against the walls, in the corners? Basically about anywhere he decides to. He don't have a really direction that he wants to. It's like... One time it can be in the middle of the floor, or one time it can be close to the wall. Okay. And, and does the kitty go outside, or are we just staying inside? He just staying inside. And, and is he a neutered kitty? Has he been yes. altered? Yeah. All righty. Very good. And do you have other cats running around the house, too, or just him? i got about nine other ones outside. Now, do any of those cats come inside? Well, they sneak in. 
this is a problem that we've had around the Animal Radio Studios. There's so many cats outside that the cats inside spray to mark their territory. I believe that's what's going on. Could that be what's yeah. going on with him? You know, absolutely. That's it's a very confusing situation when, you know, he's he's got different signals and different thoughts. You know, cats that are indoors can live a, a happy indoor existence, but when we start to have personalities in cats that they're seeing and smelling um that live outside, th- then there's a whole territory kind of question. So, you know, it's very possible that your kitty could be having problems where he's trying to mark his turf. Um, you know, I first want to make sure we don't have a health problem. And you always should have a, a urine check to make sure we don't have any infections or stones or problems of those natures. But boy, it really sounds like he has the possibility that he is just frustrated. Um, so we'd really need to figure out some way to accommodate his world differently. Um, we would want to either keep the blinds closed, keep the other cats out, and let him live his happy indoor existence, um, or make an accommodation where, you know, we We've got, uh, you know, a certain cat that stays inside with him. Um, there's so much that goes into the marking of their territory that some cats will spray on corners, some will spray in the middle of the floor, others will go into bathtubs, and sometimes right in front of your very face. So I really want to make sure that we um, kind of block the scenario where these other cats could be, uh, you know, seeing your kitty. And then at the same time, make sure everything's kosher with that litter box, because if it stinks, uh, your cat's not going to want to use it. Hi, this is Doug Gray of the Marshall Tucker Band, and forever you'll always be listening to Animal Radio. Keep loving those pets. You're listening to Animal Radio. Find us at AnimalRadio.com. Log on, learn more. This is an Animal Radio News Update. Brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Pharmacy with prescription medications and over-the-counter products like Advantix Flea and Tick medication delivered right to your door. Learn more at fosterandsmith.com. I'm Lori Brooks. Hey, there's some good news on the animals and kids allergy front these days. A new study has found that infants who share a home with kind of furry pets, were found to share some of the animal's gut bacteria, which might explain why exposing children to animals early in the kid's life may protect them from some allergies. In this research, the infant's mothers, in fact, had a history of allergies, so those babies were really at an increased risk of having allergies, too. One of the researchers was so encouraged by the findings of this study that she said, quote, if a family with a pregnant mother or an infant wants to have a pet, well, the family can be encouraged to have one because the development of allergic disease cannot be prevented by avoiding pets. New laws and ordinances to protect animals are popping up all over these days, like the new laws that prohibit pet stores from selling animals from puppy mills. Well, now in New York, the Niagara County Legislature there will consider a local law to create a county registry of people who are convicted of abusing animals that would prevent any pet adoption agency or store from selling animals to those people. A public hearing on the proposal will take place October 20th. You know, under this proposal, animal abusers would have to pay a fee to register with it, much like state sex offender registries do, and their photos, names, and current addresses would remain on the website for up to 15 years. Elephants trumpet, right? Horses whinny, owls screech, dogs bark, cats meow, you know. But do you know what a giraffe says? Now experts have found out that giraffes might not say anything, but they do a lot of humming, and they've got some recordings now that show what it sounds like. What experts have learned is that as evening progresses and sunlight begins to wane, giraffes begin to hum at a very, very low frequency that is so low it cannot be heard by human ears. I'm Lori Brooks. Get more breaking animal news anytime at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Pharmacy. With everyday low prices on products like Quellin and Rimadil delivered right to your door with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Learn more at FosterAndSmith.com. 
Doctors Foster and Smith Pet Supplies have a vet VIPPS accredited online pharmacy covering all your pet's needs from heartworm medications and anti-inflammatories like Remedil to non-prescription items like canine Advantix flea and tick preventive. Doctors Foster and Smith has your pet covered. We'll even contact your vet for you, all with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Low prices every day with free shipping on orders over $49. Shop online at fosterandsmith.com because your pet's health and happiness come first. How strong is Allegra D? It's jumping in a pile of leaves with my kids strong. (laughs) Allegra D, a fast, non-drowsy antihistamine plus a powerful decongestant that starts relieving your toughest allergy symptoms in one hour. Yep, I am going to take that hayride strong. It's breathing free for 24 hours, even after a day of apple picking strong. Allegra D, strong relief for your allergy symptoms, guaranteed or your money back. Visit Allegra.com. Use only as directed. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. It's Animal Radio. We're just talking about how hard it is to find a place to live with your pets. And uh, what was it, Francesco Martigliano last week? We were talking about how he can find a place for his goat. Can he? He can find a place for his goat, but for his cat or his dog? No way. No way. Huh? Certainly can't do it. It's tough. And if you find a place, you got to put a huge deposit down. Oh, yeah. They're really going after the pet owner and making them pay. And then you got to lie. You got to, you know, say you have, like, if you have four <laughs> cats, you got to say you have two cats. Yeah, you That's, only admit to half of them. They know that you're bold faced lying anyway. But uh, that is how you search for places. And that's how we got our place. Sure. And uh, thankfully, the landlord doesn't listen to this show. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> she could. But she anyway, could. Uh, so we got this guy on, Jason Feldman. He's a Chicago realtor. He specializes in pet-friendly homes, which is cool. I mean, he's selling homes, so it's a little easier than the whole rental situation. Yeah. But if you've ever had a cat in a house or the cat's lived in a house before you, and they've urinated, I mean, that could destroy a whole house. Yeah, when people come in looking to buy a home, they don't want to smell that or see that. He has seven tips for selling your home when you have a pet. We welcome him to the show. Jason, how you doing? Hey, guys. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, Chicago, a big, bustling real estate market, and you probably have to help people sell homes that pets have lived in, and that can't be easy, can it? Well, it depends how responsible the pet owner you have. Right? Yeah, absolutely. You mean... <laughs> Depends on how well they keep it clean. Well, it'd be because I'm a responsible pet owner, but I wouldn't want to buy this house. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, well, there's, we've had a lot of cats living in it, a lot of animals. I mean, say it's truly disgusting. And I don't know how deep into the wood floors it goes. But I'm or a responsible bathroom, owner. Front door, maybe. Agreed. Well, of course, I haven't seen your house yet, so I can't fully agree with you completely. Okay. <laughs> Oh, he'd give us some tips, Hal, on selling this place. If I'll we give you the benefit to. of the doubt. Yeah, what kind of tips would you give me? Well, if you're selling the home, uh, I would definitely do what we tell um, people who have newborns about going ahead and um, baby-proofing a home. I'd say get on your hands and knees, crawl around, see what the uh, see what the animals see, and you'll you'll find pretty quickly some of the things that you normally wouldn't see from the vantage point of a full-grown to an adult. Like all the nose prints on that level of the wall and on the glass? The nose prints, the, the, the slumber buildup, scratches. You know, it, it really depends how, you, you know, the angles you look at it to see, you know, how noticeable certain, certain things are. Yeah. Now we're getting really gross. But, yes, you can definitely um, see a lot more when you get on your hands and knees and take a look and see what they see. When you stage a house, should you even let the people know that you have animals? Should I pick up the bowls and, and stuff, or them? should I hide the fact that I even had animals? Definitely, you should. Uh, you should definitely pick up the food bowls, pick up the poo pee pads, move the litter, clean the litter first, please. Please clean the litter first. <laughs> you do not want people inhaling that when they walk into a room. I don't know. Um, my litter about... smells like chocolate chip cookies. Stop it, Hal. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I love chocolate chip Stop. cookies. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind tasting your chocolate chip cookies as long as it's not in a bed of litter. Uh. What else? I would definitely, I would, I would definitely uh, say, you know, clean up anything that has any kind of odors whatsoever, um, or anything that looks like an animal has lived there. You do not want to, you know, for full disclosure, you do not want to, you know, hide anything particular. You know, oh, there's no pet that ever lived here. People, people will notice it, but you definitely don't want. 
people walking through your kitchen into into the um, into the side room or maybe the uh, laundry laundry room is and stepping on on dog pee. It's not it's not a good situation when you're trying to show a house. I have a question. What do you do for those people who, because I, I was actually just in this situation, you, you're selling your house, but you have lived there for so long that you don't smell what other people smell when they come in. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, ode, ode to cat and dog smell. Um, I would actually suggest you have someone else come in um, who ha- doesn't spend a lot of time there. Come in and let's ask them if they notice anything. And should you remove the animal, I guess, like uh, during an open house? I went to a house one time, and I opened the closet, and there was an animal in the closet. And I don't know who was more surprised, me or the animal. Yeah, That's just wrong. Yeah, I know. It was Yeah, when you have the glowing eyes of a cat (laughs) on the top shelf of a closet, and you walk in, and this thing is peering down at you, it can freak people a little bit. Uh, Whenever possible, the the dog especially um, should be removed from the house um, at the... At the least, it should be crated. Um, many times people will say, well, just don't go into a room, right? There's, there's a dog in there or a cat in there. And, uh-huh. you know, you're trying to show off in your house. So I would say, when possible, hire a a, um, a dog walker during the showings, during the open house. Cats are a little more difficult, obviously. You know, most people don't walk them down the street. But when possible, do remove them. Um, I've been in situations where... An agent would say, you know, yeah, the keys are with the doorman. You go to the doorman, you get the keys, and oh, and by the way, just make sure you don't let the cats out. And then, you know, you walk in there, and, and you're, you're peering through the cracks just to see if, you know, killer cat is going to be there <laughs> ready to, to, you know, be sprung, sprung loose and run through the hallways. So whenever possible, definitely get the animals out of the house. And you know, if, if it's a cat, you know, try and, and, and isolate it to a certain area. We are with Jason Feldman. He's a Chicago realtor, and uh, he specializes in pet-friendly housing. Are more and more people looking for accessories in the house that are pet-related, like baths, big baths? The humidification of of animals, pets, uh, is obviously an extremely big marketing campaign in, in this country. And so you can pretty much find any bells and whistles that you find for a person, you find for a dog or a cat now. I've learned so much. Thank you for devoting your real estate business specifically to pet-friendly real estate. I think that's a great move. I hope to see more realtors doing that. Jason Feldman joining us. His website, ChicagoPetFriendlyRealEstate.com, and links to everything you've heard on today's show over at AnimalRadio.com. Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, you guys. Have a great day. We're going to head back to the phones for your calls. Toll free, one 866 405 Sometimes I just love listening to these old bumpers. I know, that music takes me back. Exile, love you all over, just like the animal that you'll adopt along the Get Your Licks on Route 66 adoption tour that is uh, about halfway through right now. And in fact, Susan is in St. Louis prepping for tomorrow. Hey, Susan, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, you guys. It's been really a whirlwind, and we're lucky to be staying at the Fido Friendly Moonrise Hotel in St. Louis so we can rest up for tomorrow's big event, the Canine Carnival. How many animals do you think we've adopted so far? Gosh, I think we're pushing up to the 400 mark, uh, which we're really thrilled with. I think last year we reached 600, and overall in the first six years it's been over 3,000 that uh, we have helped uh, place into New Forever Homes. So we are just having a, a blast, and the stories are wonderful. They're coming out in, in uh, great droves in uh, this canine carnival tomorrow. They normally have about 3,000 attendees, so it's wow. going to be a big one. Okay, so where's that happening at? So we're going to be, if you go online to get your licks on Route 66, it'll tell you exactly where to go. Okay, and that's tomorrow from 11 to 3 p.m. in St. Louis. Then you'll be in Chicago, the Windy City, October 10th at uh, Paws, Chicago from 11 to 4 p.m. October 11th, you'll be in Springfield. Illinois. Illinois, of course, yes. And there's, there's a lot of Springfields all over. There place. are actually a lot of Springfields. <laughs> I, get mixed up. Yeah. I don't know how many are on Route 66. Uh, Kansas City, of course, along Route 66, and you'll be in Kansas City October 17th, and then ending out in Miriam, Kansas. 
That's a great way to end your tour over there. Yeah, I, I have to say again, I couldn't do it without you guys. You've been great uh, media partners for all seven years. So with your help and our, our wonderful Mercedes Sprinter that Sprinter Rentals has provided us this year, we've got logos all over this car, and we're getting a lot of thumbs up and horn honking and it's it's just great very good you can learn more and get your licks on route66.com and of course links to everything you've heard on today's show over at animalradio.com susan we'll check in with you before the end of the tour all right thanks guys well this portion of animal radio is underwritten by those awesome incredibly genius folks over at company of animals like dr roger mugford he invented this that's the pet corrector so if your dog steals food toys or shoes or perhaps barks when it shouldn't bark here's your savior it's the pet corrector and you can find out more over at companyofanimals.us let's head back to the phones for your calls toll free 1-866-405-8405 for dr debbie or joey villani right now Well, this portion of Animal Radio is underwritten by Stella and Chewy's. If your dog is hungry, get them away from the radio right now because I'm going to tell you about meal mixers. Okay? Okay. You know pets thrive when they're fed the same food they get in the wild, and meal mixers are an easy and a convenient way to add raw, nutrient-rich meat, wholesome fruits, vegetables, probiotics, and antioxidants to any diet. I think your dog heard. Uh-oh. You said it too loudly, Hal. Learn more over at StellaandChewy's.com. Who do we have on the phone with us? Hi, this is Marianne. Hi, Marianne. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Where are you? I'm in Avon, Connecticut. Oh, that sounds pretty. And I bet the <laughs> fall colors are not just a but a month or so away, huh? Exactly. <laughs> You're on with Dr. Debbie. Hi, Dr. Well, Debbie. Well, hi. How are you today? I'm I'm great. Thanks. Um, my question is, we're getting a puppy in about a week and a half. And, oh, um, yeah. <laughs> very <laughs> <And> fun. <laughs> it's exciting. I'm nervous, what? but um, the breeder and the book um, that she recommended both say that we should keep the puppy, like, in a box close to our bed for the first couple of nights, and then... You know, I have a lot of dogs in my neighborhood, a lot of dog owners, and they say, well, some people say you should keep the puppy in the crate so they don't get used to it, you know, being close. So I was wondering what you thought. Okay. What kind of puppy are you getting? We're getting a Labradoodle. A Labradoodle. Oh, the best of both worlds there. (laughs) I'm a Labrador uh, lover myself, so um, I I definitely think the Labrador and any mixes thereof are fabulous. Um, As far as, um, have you had dogs before, or is this your first dog? It's really, I mean, I had dogs growing up, but this is really our our first family dog. Okay. And it's it's a great time. Puppyhood is so much fun, um, but it's also some of the most frustrating time you'll ever have with your, your, with your dog. Um, and I am a firm believer in the crate training method. I'm not really sure what the box thing was. Um, if they were alluding to a crate, then I, I definitely support that, but I don't see a reason to keep a box, um, as a kind of a way of, uh, you know, confining the pet because it, it really doesn't do the same thing that a crate does. Um, right. the idea with crate training really is, is that we're, we're pulling out an instinct that dogs already have. Um, yeah. They already have that instinct to want to kind of sleep in an enclosed area. And if you look at wild dogs, you know, that's what they do. Wolves sleep in a den. They go out elsewhere to go poop and to go pee. So yeah. um, I definitely believe in that and to pull that instinct out and to use it to our advantage so that we can use it for house training and right. and also for, um, you know, to keep them away from things that they might get into when they're not supervised. Yeah. And uh, so, do, you, do you have uh, reservations right. about that method? Well, no, I'm I'm all for the crate training, and um, the the book that I just kind of solely read is that Monks of New Skeet, which um, seems like a a good training book. But I think they were saying she was saying to keep them close to you, like for the first couple of nights, so that they're not completely freaked out. I don't know what you well, think about that. I don't want to sleep in my mud room by the crate. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that it's important for them not to feel 
totally abandoned. Um, I personally could not sleep with my puppies in the room, um, but I yeah. had a very okay. vocal puppy who slept very loudly. He was a, a whiner, a crier, a kicker in his sleep, and, and that was just very disruptive. I yeah. do think it's important when you get a new puppy to do a couple things to make them feel as comfortable as possible. And remembering we're yanking them away from mom and all their, their yeah. siblings. So I do believe in using some of the sound therapies, um, getting okay. a nighttime sound machine. Um, you know, some people will play quiet music, but I think some of the, the water sounds, the nature sounds, some of those type of things are very soothing. And there's specialized tapes you can get for uh, puppy training that are geared exactly towards that. Um, there's one called heartbeat therapy, which is very useful, um, okay. for kind of calming dogs. Um, and then, you know, making sure that, you know, they have a comfortable spot. Um, but I'm a, I'm a believer in kind of letting them cry it out. Okay. <laughs> just like, uh, just like people with just kids, like you know, kids. if they, they, if you cry and you pick them up, then, you know, you're reasserting that behavior and getting what they want is your attention. And, um, I think it's more important to, to raise a puppy who is independent and who doesn't yeah. always have to cling to the human in the household. Mm. You know what, uh, Marianne, I'm going to give you just some tips that we've learned in the last couple of days. I, I don't know if you can hear the chihuahua in the background. This uh, this <laughs> yeah. brand-new chihuahua just uh, came into uh, the studios a couple of days ago. And, Judy, you're dealing with that at home. You're dealing with the whole sleeping issues. Uh, Ju- I'm not sleeping. There are no sleeping <laughs> issues. That's well, the problem. That's not true. That's not completely <laughs> true. You are sleeping. But I am. Is the dog with you at the time? Yes. What I've done is I've got her in a crate, and I keep her right by my bed. And if she wakes up in the night and starts whimpering, I stick my fingers through the crate. She kind of smells them and sucks on them, and she'll go right back to sleep. I think it's important to keep her with you, but still keep her confined. Let her see you, Let right? her, She knows I'm there. But don't become too dependent upon that. Well, I'm very dependent upon her. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else you were using is this CD you brought in, uh, Companion Music from Pet Botanica or Pet Botanica Boutique, uh, which is, uh, it says it's a great way to help ease the stress of separation for your pet naturally. Does that work? Does the CD work? I think so. She really calms down. She's running around and crying, and if I play this music, she kind of lays down, and she settles down very well. She's only eight weeks old, so it's working for her. (laughs) And we use a tape like that here in our kennels oh, to you? help calm pets when they're away from their um, their families. And um, it definitely has some good basis. So, yeah, I think some of those tools, I, I kind of disagree with, you know, keeping the puppy right by the bed. You Do know, Because not every dog is going to respond and go to sleep. Mm. Some are going to take that little finger in the cage as a way of saying, oh, mommy's going to play with me now. <laughs> um, so for me, that was never a part of uh, my puppy training that I felt that ever worked. It was more disruptive for um, the training purpose. Okay, so it's tough love all the way around, huh? It is in my house. (laughs) Hopefully that helps. Send us pictures of your new dog, okay? Your Labradoodle. Thank you. Thanks so much. No problem. Good luck. Well, there you go. It has just flown by once again. Thank you so much for spending the last two hours with us. If you uh, missed any part of it, you can head over to the website or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android and listen to it and ask your questions anytime you desire. Thanks, Jason Feldman, for joining us today, and especially you. Remember. I forgot. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Dr. Debbie's books, Yorkshire Terriers, Shih Tzus, Pugs, Mini Schnauzers, How to Be Your Dog's Best Friend. They're Amazon Kindle books, and we have more information over at the website at animalradio.com. Have a great week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. This is Animal Radio Network.